Hey everybody, welcome to Harry's Buddies at Audubon. We're coming to you from Audubon Nature Institute in New Orleans, Louisiana. That's right, I'm Zach. And I'm Jamie. And we love Harry's big adventure. We love Harry, we love his pals. And so, we're excited to introduce you to even more bugs. Buddies of Harry's that are awesome. Let's check out what we've got today. I hate change. But Zach, change is a part of life. Change happens, and it's not always bad. Oh yeah? Then tell me why I should be happy about this. Oh, the heck? Well, I lose a lot of coins in the car, and I only clean the car like once a year. So, now I have to deal with all this change. I can't stand it. Really? <laughs> That's such a long way to go for a joke. True, but it's the best idea I had for introducing today's topic, metamorphosis. Met some porpoises? No, metamorphosis. I know, I know. That word means a change in shape, and in this case, we're planning to tell everyone about the ways in which insects grow. Precisely. Two different types of insect growth are most common, incomplete metamorphosis and complete metamorphosis. I'm completely enthralled. Well, it's pretty cool stuff. Let's start with incomplete metamorphosis. That sounds like it should be a partial change in shape, and it is. In such cases, the young insect, or nymph, looks basically the same as the adult, but smaller. It molts its hard outer skin, the exoskeleton, in order to grow. Ultimately, it will have one final molt, and it will then be an adult insect that can reproduce and usually has four wings. And I have an example of incomplete metamorphosis with us today. Oh, oh, let me guess. Is it a grasshopper? Uh, is it a dragonfly? A cicada? Ooh, a stink bug. Wait, wait, is it a roach? Whoa, 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 whoa. The good news, Zach, is that all of the insects you just named do undergo incomplete metamorphosis. The nymphs look, for the most part, like miniature wingless versions of the adults. But in this case, I have for us a mantis. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, is it Harry the Praying Mantis from World Wide Web fame? No, I mean, Harry's got a way cool website for sure. Y'all should, should check it out. out. But I've got a relative of Harry here called a giant Asian mantis. This isn't really all that big. Well, that's because it's a nymph. It's not done growing yet. Here's the adult. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, I must say, now that I can look at a youngster and an adult of the same species, I can really appreciate the whole incomplete metamorphosis thing. I hope our viewers do too. Let's move on now to complete metamorphosis. Roger that. Insects that develop by way of complete metamorphosis have four distinctly different looking stages to their life. Egg, larva, pupa, and adult. In addition to looking nothing like the adult, larval insects often have different diets and in fact, entirely different mouth parts. Aw, what a shame. They can't just sit around the dinner table and share a meal? Well, there are a lot of reasons why that might not happen, Jamie. But the advantage to complete metamorphosis is that typically it means larvae and adults aren't competing with each other for food or space. While I show off the eggs, larvae, pupae, and adults of this sphinx moth, maybe you can expand on that hypothesis. Okay. Well, most insects lay eggs, lots of them. In this case, the larvae that hatch have a specific name, caterpillars. Other kinds of larvae are maggots, which become flies, and grubs, which become beetles. The job of a larva is to eat and grow. At some point, that stops, and when the larva molts, it has become a pupa. During this stage, the body transforms completely. The adult insect's job is to disperse and reproduce. Nicely explained. So in this case, Caterpillars have chewing mouth parts and eat leaves, whereas adult butterflies and moths have sucking mouth parts and drink mainly nectar from flowers. They eat different things and rest in different areas, and all this means that adults and offspring aren't going after the same limited resources. Ants, bees, and wasps, beetles, flies, butterflies, and moths all have complete metamorphosis. 
Do you think the pest control person from Terminix who helps me at home knows all this stuff about change? They better. Those are well-trained folks, you know. And they can tell you if a given insect may be a pest only at certain times of its life. For example, some caterpillars can damage clothing by eating wool fabric. But the adult moths of these species don't eat anything solid at all. Seems like change is good after all. For insects, at least. Now, this stuff. Zach, that must weigh over 10 pounds. Think about all the ice cream you could buy with that. Oh, yeah. You were right, Jamie. Change is good. It's delicious. This is great. If he ever goes through metamorphosis, I'll bet he'd turn into a giant cube made out of sugar. Bye, y'all. See you next time.